and welcome back MMO students of 3dbuzz.com we're gonna continue with Lee's R&D little session that he had with generating um, our, our patch geometry for procedurally generated terrain so in the last video he well got a mesh created outstanding so now in this video we're gonna get rid of this uh, pink color and move into some texture which means to get a texture properly laid out on our geometry, we need to have UVs, and we don't have any UVs at the moment. Yeah, we're going to need some textures and some materials, all kinds of real cool stuff. So let's go ahead and hit stop on that. Yep. and uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close up some of these folders real quick because I don't really need them, but I need some new ones. Okay. So we're going to need another folder. This one it's going to hold textures. So I need a texture. Well, luckily... I've got one. So I'm going to drag it in from off screen, drop it in. Give it a sec to import. This is nothing fancy. I just went to Google, grabbed a UV pattern texture, just something that I can throw on to make sure that our UVs are mapping the way we expect them to. Right. Now, we also need a material. So create another folder, the whole of materials. I'll move it here in a sec. And I'm going to call this one materials. I'm going to drag it out from here and I want to be able to load this material procedurally so I'm going to need another folder inside of here called resources this will allow me to use the resource.load functionality that's built in. I hate to ask this only because this is just something I've not committed to memory is this something that people can do with unity standard? Yes. Okay. Yep, not a problem. Alright, now I need a material so I'm going to collect my material. I'm going to hit F2, rename it M underscore UV test. So now we've got a material, but you know, I want it to look cooler than that. So we'll drag our so texture. Fail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mouse slipped off too yeah, soon. Right. Okay. So now we have a material, and we can try something real quick. I can go ahead and hit play and switch over to our scene. I can take this and drag it right on. But that doesn't look anything like this. Mm -hmm. That doesn't look too good at all. I mean, it obviously accepted the material, mm -hmm. but as far as... Um, right, if I click on the mesh, now we have a material, and it's got a diffuse shader, but nothing. It's better than pink, but it's definitely not what we'd like. The reason why is our mesh that we created, we had to do it procedurally but we have no UVs to it. Mm -hmm. So we have to procedurally create those as well. All right. So we're going to go ahead and hit stop, jump back over into code, and let's create some UVs. Now the best place to do this is going to be when we're creating our terrain patch. Now you've already created a list to um, back up at the top to yes. hold the uh, vector twos. Okay, there yep, we go. Right here. So we've already got a list to hold our UVs. We just have nothing in it. So we'll, let's go ahead and start adding some UVs. Now, I can create a, another var called var u, and in here, let's go ahead and keep it fairly simple. X time spacing. Then we're going to divide it by our size minus one times spacing. And I'm going to use this for both the U and the V. What we're doing is we know that we have a size. Mm -hmm. We're subtracting one. Real quick before we get too far from it, don't we want to on V change that X to a Z? Yes. Okay. Okay, sorry to interrupt. Continue. Okay. What we're doing is, with this part of the equation, we're trying to figure out how much space total is being taken up, as I gesture with my hands, but Jason understands what I'm talking <laughs> about. Basically, we're trying to convert our UVs and the size of our world from being whatever size and spacing that we get. In the case right now, where we're using a map size of 128 by 4, so if I do some real quick math, that works out to be about 512 units across. Okay. UVs do not work at 0 to 512. They only know 0 to 1. 
So what this is doing is it's calculating every x position times the spacing relative to the overall size of our unit and converting whatever ratio this is to be 0 to 1. Okay. So it's going to use x for our u and z for our v, converting it from 0 to 1, and then we're going to take that and we're going to add it to our uvs. So we go uvs dot add and just a new vector 2 x comma z or yeah. u comma v maybe? How about u comma v? All right. So semicolon. That adds our uv for this case. If you remember we have to calculate differently mm -hmm. based off of odd and evens. So we're going to take most of this code we're going to bring it down here and we're going to paste it. Now this one's going to be slightly different because we're not using x by spacing because we're offsetting. But we have position x already calculated for us. So we're going to take this one and we're going to replace sorry I got something in my eye. We're going to replace this whole unit. Ah come on. I'm failing at the keyboard mouse coordination thing. All right, so position x now, which is our modified position right. x for you. Which has been calculated a few lines above. Right. And then we add it just like we do before. So nothing has changed other than this one part. Okay. Same thing. So now we have some UVs. Go ahead and make sure I didn't make any errors. But we've added it to the list, but the mesh doesn't know anything about it. So we have to come down here where we create our mesh. And we have to tell it about those UVs. Now, to do that, we call up mesh, and there's a parameter called UV, UV1, and UV2. The one we're looking for first is going to be UV. So mesh UV equals UVs to array. So we can use this. And I'm going to add that, build it, jump back over to Unity. Go ahead and hit play. So once again, it's pink. Go ahead and select it. Take our material, drop, drop it on. Very, very nice. Now we have a texture that goes all the way across it. No tiling, no nothing else. But there's also another issue with it. If I create a cube. And let's go ahead and put this at about 5 by 0.5 by 5. Select it, zoom up on it. Make sure that I put in a light, create other directional light. I'm going to rotate this around. And I'm going to tell it to cast shadows. So now, this light should be casting shadows. There's no shadows. Well, you can always throw a, another, a quick plane up underneath there and raise it up and just to show that. Right, so if I go ahead and create other and bring in a plane, give it our texture. by casting shadows. Let me check what my settings are, make sure everything's right. Um, editor, player physics, um, quality. Let's go ahead and bump this up. And editor. Of course, I'm doing this all while I'm running, so I'm going to have to go through and change it all again, too. Deferred lighting. So, am I not getting any real time shadows? What's going on? See, aren't I such a pain by saying, prove it to me? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Oh, hold on. Did something move? No. no there's... How about I go into the game? So, mouse. Where's my mouse? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bitten by your own stuff. Yes. Main camera. So I'm going to have to bring my camera over. I 
I'm so glad they put this in. Shadows. Shadows. All right, plane. Go away. Shadows. That's weird. Because I wasn't getting shadows before because there's two different uh, passes. So I wonder if that has changed recently. Because if I stop, for shadow mapping to work right in shadow casting, mm -hmm. usually you've got two UV sets. You've got one for your regular UVs. So if you've got overlying um, vertices, mm -hmm. then you've got one UV set and then you've got the light map set, which is usually mapped to the second one. Now, but we're not dealing with light maps here, though, are we? I mean, they well, the shadows getting cast, we're still relying on the second set. Okay. And like I said, this isn't my area. Right. Well, one I used to play with it in some other experiments where I was doing mm -hmm. mesh stuff. My shadows wouldn't work if I just had the single really mesh. So they were there, but they were all over the place. Gotcha. So what I had to do previously is I also had to assign the same uh, UVs to UV1. Because UV is the first set. Mm -hmm. So let's think of it this way. If you were building some sort of asset that had different, uh, was using a texture atlas, mm -hmm. and you were t mapping out overlapping areas of UVs mm -hmm. to reuse the same part of the atlas, those shadows wouldn't look right on that first UV set. Right. You have to have... Every UV has to have its own um, space. And um, light baking and stuff like that relies on that second light right. map UV set. So by setting UV, uh, the regular UV in UV1, we're now assigning that light map channel. So go ahead and comment uh, UV1, that line out, line 134. Mm -hmm. And jump back over, uh, save that out, jump back over into Unity. I'm I'm just curious based off what you said. Go ahead and hit uh, um, play. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you got a good point with everything's already all since you did it all at runtime. Right. I was just gonna say to verify. Um, but I mean, we we saw the shadow. I just you know in case it was something wonky done by having that plane in there. Well, but, I'm, I'm just wondering because of the new UV set being so perfect. Well, then again, when you think about it. The other experiments that I was working with mm -hmm. when I was doing light mapping mm -hmm. were using objects that weren't a flat plane. Right. That's so they true. were a three-dimensional object as opposed to a flat plane. So that might also be it. But it doesn't hurt, especially when you get into the fact that we're going to be distorting this mesh into a three-dimensional mesh to assign both UVs. Right. So... The easy way to look at it is if you use just the one UV set and you start noticing anomalies with your shadows, that's because you need the light map version. Okay. So, but I haven't seen that before, but I've not done a flat plane. But now we've got our UV mapping in place. But like I said, every time we start it, we don't get our material. Our right. material is just getting... So we're going to go and get that assigned time. just so... Right, so we, we want to actually have that set up for us. Okay. So we need a couple more things to make this happen. We need a material. So I'm going to be real original with the naming game called Material. I'm going to go into the creation here before we create the grid and the mesh need to assign the material. Material is going to equal resources. Load. And I named the material M underscore UV test. And I need to cast that as a material. So that'll load in our material. Now we can scroll down to the bottom. I've created a mesh render, but I don't have access to it yet. So, but I need access to it now. So I need to go. Uh, let's see. Do I want to do a mesh render? No, I'll go and access it from mesh. Not M mesh. 
mesh object dot render because that's a quick way to access my render uh, mesh renderer component and I'm gonna set its material to equal the material that we just loaded so build that now up. am I crazy at thinking something did you Probably, create a, a if you scroll back to the top in your code did you make a mesh renderer that's a yes field that is that being used it isn't being used yet because I was thinking about it as the same way as the mesh filter but because I can access the renderer through mesh object dot renderer so I don't we can go really ahead need it I can jump up it. there and kill that one yeah. out okay or I could just rename it later but either way I'll comment it eh, forget it I'll just delete it it's not hard with IntelliSense to add the next component so I'm accessing it from there now if I go ahead and have render or run and see if we get our material I see something very cool so now we've got a texture but it's not tiling and you know that would look really hor horrendous if it was a real texture so let's go ahead and put some scaling on this now with the scaling what I want to do is because I have a test pattern and I know the test pattern has 10 samples all the way across what I would like for our test when we're going through and trying to figure out the density and how much the size of our world I would like it if each one of these squares was exactly one meter across okay or sorry not one meter across but one um, unit across so if our density is or our spacing is set to one I would like this to be one meter across if it was set to two I would like this to be two meters across okay four four if it was half half a meter across gotcha so we've got a very visual look at the density of our mesh without having to switch over to wireframe okay and we can test stuff out makes sense now to pull that off we'll go to mesh object dot render dot material dot main texture scale and we're going to create a new vector too and a little bit more math because it's 10 units across I only and I want each unit to be one tenth of that I'm going to take one point one or one tenth and I'm going to time or multiply that by size minus one now if you remember we went through and added the code to automatically add one to our size so we can get that extra mm -hmm. vertex mm -hmm. we don't need we, I don't care about the vertex in this count I care about the individual spaces in between so I need to subtract one from here and this code is going to be the same for the X as it is for the Z so if I save that out go ahead and multiply this go in let's go ahead and zoom in so whoops I'm doing good at clicking on things I don't mean <laughs> to today but now if you look and if I bring up the grid actually that works right there so oh, I see you're wanting to get the okay so if you remember currently we're set at a size of four mm -hmm. or a spacing of four so one two three four units across now if I move leave the camera here go back in the code leave the camera there you were at play well I had adjusted it inside of the okay. editor part so it's still gonna be there so if I leave my size still at 128 but I take my patch spacing and set it to one mm -hmm. what I expect to see is each square mm -hmm. taking up one so if I switch over one one one, one. very nice likewise if I go in and set it to say 0 0.025 now I expect to see four squares for each meter let's just verify that's what I see 
one, two, three, four. Excellent. So if I actually click on stuff, we can see that we have 16 faces per meter. Mm -hmm. Very dense grid at this point. Probably it would look awesome as far as detail. Probably not play so well. Right. So. Okay, so now we've got a material, the texture. We've got UVs assigned so that it lays out properly. And you now have a predictable way of showing our textures in such a way that it accommodates us and quickly telling what size we're dealing with. Yep. Well, and you want to play with something else real quick? Sure. It's got... Well, it's kind of flat. Okay. You want to do that in the next video? Well, I've got something... Yeah, let's... We'll, we'll, we'll play with some stuff. We'll just play with some short in the next video. I'll keep it short. Oh, okay. Since you've got to leave for the airport here in like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, what else is new? I always I wait until the last possible moment to hop on an airplane. Okay, so that wraps up this video. Thanks a lot.